couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to a very special lesson right here on Lickin' Riffs because in this video I want to discuss with you a few ways in which parents and some music teachers uh, actually ruin and destroy music students and cause them frustration and that frustration sometimes lead to quitting so I wanna help out in that area. Now um, I've heard of many 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 teachers uh, that do that and I also encountered, uh, you know, hundreds of parents uh, in my teaching career and I know exactly how you feel when your parents put the pressure on you. So let's start with parents and then we'll talk a bit about teachers. So um, the first way that parents put pressure on music students is by um, first claiming that the kid doesn't practice enough. And that's wrong most of the time because the kids don't practice in front of the parents. So the parents don't hear them practice and then assume that they don't practice. And that's just wrong. And the second thing about it is that it doesn't really matter whether the kid practices as much as the parent wants because it's the kid's hobby. And that's the second uh, thing that I want to talk about, that it's a hobby. And parents tend to forget that and then the parents just put pressure on the kid to play better and play for them and uh, show them what they've learned and sometimes the kids don't want to sometimes the kid um, wants to sit in his room his or her room and wants to practice and wants to play and wants to just jam around and fool around with the guitar and they're shy and they don't want to play for anyone just yet and the parents demand for them to play for them and then the kids get frustrated they don't want to they shout they go to their room and they say I'm not playing anymore um, I've seen that happen a lot and that's just a shame because um, if the parents just give the kid the time he'll play for you okay he or she will play for you in their own time and that's probably the most important message that I want to convey for parents now um, another thing about the guitar being a hobby is that uh, it's not school even if it's a guitar school it's not um, formal high school education or grade school education. There is no, there is no real um, goal to reach. There is no uh, grade to achieve. There is no number uh, or um, a grade. You know, A plus, B plus, C minus, seventy, eighty, ninety, sixty, fail. There is no such thing in music studies. No such thing. Even if you study at a guitar school or a music school that actually gives you grades, I suggest you leave that school and take a really good private teacher because that's not the way to learn music. Music is something very, very uh, private and everyone progresses at their own pace. So you can't actually compare different students, okay? You can uh, aspire to um, to teach all the students the same material but not everyone will do the same with the material some will be better at soloing some will be better at uh, chord progressions some will be better at classical compositions and have trouble in the other areas some students I've had were terrific um, in everything to do with technique they could tap they could uh, do complex chords but they couldn't keep time and in six months they learn how to keep time or they kept perfect time but they had trouble uh, changing chords so they learn changing chords in time in due time everything balances out now um, another thing that parents do um, when they um, demand the kid to play for them is that the kid would probably make a lot of mistakes because they're um, a they don't want to play for you yet. They're not ready. B, they probably haven't practiced enough to play anything perfectly. And they'll probably make mistakes. They'll be a bit nervous and a bit anxious and they won't be at their, the top of their game when they play for the parents. So um, naturally, 
the kid would make mistakes, and then the parent would say, ah, oh, you, you don't practice enough, uh, you, you should know this song by now. And that's A, not true, and B, that's the worst thing that you can tell your kid. Most parents will also say, uh, that's really nice, but don't. Just say, it's really nice, you're making good progress. That's what the kid needs. Even if the kid can't pull off a decent chord, you should pat them on the back and say, great job, keep practicing. That's all. That's the parent's job with that hobby. It's a hobby. Even if later on the kid decides to take it on as, a, um, you know, as an occupation, a music teacher, a musician, it'll happen on its own. Don't push the kids. That's all I wanted to say about parents. It was a lot of things to say, but that's all. Um, the second subject of this lesson is teachers. Now, you should have warning signs for bad teachers. The first warning sign is if the teacher wants you to play exactly like they do. Okay? No two players play exactly the same. No such thing. If the uh, teacher sees um, that you put the G chord on like this, and he puts it on like this, and tells you, no, this is wrong, dump the teacher, okay? Put the chord on any way you want. You can put it on like this. Steve Morse does. And if, an, an, and if Steve Morse puts on the G chord like this, you can put it on like this too, okay? Any teacher that tells you play exactly like I do isn't a good teacher. That's uh, the most important warning sign. The second uh, warning sign is if the teacher doesn't know how to congratulate you on a job well done and only knows how to uh, reprimand you on your mistakes and your lack of progress and your lack of practicing. Again, no such thing. Everyone progresses in their own pace. No two students are alike. So if a teacher always tells you what you're doing wrong and never tells you what you're doing right, or if they're uh, telling you what you're doing wrong 90% of the time and only 10% of the time congratulating you and telling you, wow, you're playing that really well, leave that teacher and find a better teacher. The third um, and probably a very important point that a lot of teachers don't agree with me on is that if the teacher only teaches you boring stuff, they're not a very good teacher. If they're only showing you chord shapes, if they're only showing you scale shapes, if they're only giving you this exercise, the chromatic exercise to practice with for months on end, that's also not a very good idea for a teaching routine and a learning routine, especially not in a creative occupation such as music because uh, you should be creative from day one. You should learn the songs you like, you should learn the stuff that you wanna play, and on top of that, learn basics, techniques, scales, chords, and learn how to use them, okay? Not uh, to start composing right away or improvising right away, even though you can also do that. You can compose from day one. You can uh, improvise from day one if you have a teacher that knows how to teach you how to do that. Um, you can do anything you want. There's no real itinerary in studying music because, again, everyone is different. You want to go, go, go. He's heard all that stuff before. Um, and um, where was I? ADHD. Um, right. If you're only learning boring stuff, another teacher will teach you creative stuff. Go to a different teacher, okay? You don't have to suffer in order to make music. The idea is the more fun you're having, the better player and musician you'll be. And if you're not having fun, find a better teacher. That's all I wanted to say. So I'll see you in the next uh, lesson, and thank you very much for watching. Share this with whomever you see fit and whomever you think needs this. Thank you very much. I'm just trying to help. Bye for now.